Hello everyone and welcome once again inside Mayor Bill Peduto's office. Today we are here for the first episode of Meet the Chiefs. We are going to dive into the mayor's office and all of the appointees that he has working with him in his administration. It seems appropriate to start with the Chief of Staff. I'm joined by Kevin Ackland today. Kevin, thanks for joining us. Good morning, Katie. Thank you for being here. It's so great to have you with us and it's really great to finally get an opportunity to show the city of Pittsburgh all of the great things that are happening within this administration. I'm going to start right off the top. You are new to the mayor's office, right? But you are not new to the concept and to the realm of public service. Tell us a little bit about your family history and how you sort of became exposed to the world uh, of public service. Uh, great question. Well, I'm actually a third generation uh, city of Pittsburgh employee. Uh, my grandfather uh, was a battalion chief uh, in Oakland uh, on Myron Avenue, where I spent a lot of time as a kid. I grew up in South Oakland, and his helmet actually is here on my desk. Um, I spent a lot of time with him as a kid you can see it still has his name, uh, Chief Harris, is my mom's dad. Um, my mom raised me and my two brothers by herself, so he was an important influence in my life as a young kid and uh, spent a lot of time in the firehouse. <clears throat> you know, growing up, uh, my uncle on my dad's side was also a fire captain, uh, recently um, retired. Uh, my brother's a state trooper. Uh, my stepfather works for the city in public works, so, um, you know, Typical Irish Catholic family, I was supposed to be the priest in the family, and, uh, <laughs> but I disappointed, it's a true story, uh, disappointed everybody and, and went, to, went to law school, but this was an opportunity to come back uh, to serve a city I love uh, for a man who I respect and our new mayor. I, I wouldn't have taken this job uh, for any politician, but I think uh, what we have is a tremendous opportunity in a time on our city's history where um, we're d doing some great things and, and to bring that prosperity to all neighborhoods is something that, that Mayor Peduto wants to do and I'm very pleased to be here at his side. Okay, so you were slated to be a man of the cloth, yeah. but you ended up a man here in I the did. mayor's administration. Did you ever see yourself be working in City Hall? Or, I mean, you have the title of chief, maybe not quite like a fire chief, you don't yeah. have the badge, but yeah. did you ever see yourself being here in this building? I did, in fact, I, I ran for mayor in 2009 uh, as an independent and uh, it was a quixotic race. We were up against stiff odds. Uh, that experience of being in the neighborhoods, listening to the residents, uh, really armed me for this position. In fact, I can't imagine have, being able to do this job <clears throat> without having run uh, to learn all the policies, to learn how, you know how city government works. And so uh, I practiced law a as a lawyer, and it was a transactional lawyer, uh, buying and selling companies and working with businesses and entrepreneurs uh, for most of my career. Uh, and when the mayor won the, won the primary, uh, you know, we had been friends for about 10 years, always saw him as somebody who uh, could really provide strong leadership for our city. And so it, it is something that as a kid I always envisioned, uh, primarily because of the influence uh, of people in my family who serve the city, uh, that someday I'd, I'd be here. And, and I don't take it, uh, it for granted. You know, I start my days early. I'm usually in the office here before 5 o'clock in the morning. Um, but then I go home and we have three young kids at home and I take the boys uh, to school every day because I don't want to sacrifice that as part of part of this commitment. But, you know, uh, being here, uh, sort of when I walk in the door every day, I, I, I do kind of pinch myself that we're here, you know, serving the residents from the mayor's office. Now, like a lot of people that grew up in Pittsburgh, myself included, I left and went away for a while. I went away to school. I didn't anticipate moving back and working in the city. Uh, and you have a similar story. Obviously, you, you've accomplished a lot, and you were out going to law school, and you were really establishing yourself in your career. What brought you back to Pittsburgh, and what is it about Pittsburgh that made you interested in raising your family here and really reestablishing those roots? Well, we um, started my, uh, left Pittsburgh first to go to school in Boston, and then went to law school in Washington, uh, D.C., and then went back to Boston to start my law career. Uh, great American city, you know, to be up there, uh, you know, not, not as favorable to their sports teams being a Steeler fan, uh, although I became a Red Sox fan when I was up there as well. I lived just a couple blocks from Fenway Park. Uh, I can't imagine a better place than Pittsburgh to raise a family, and that's what it was about. You know, at a time uh, when my then girlfriend, now wife, and I were talking about where we wanted to stay. She's a teacher. She was teaching in Boston. Uh, we, after spending a few years there, decided to come back to Pittsburgh about 11 years ago. Uh, we live, I grew up in, on one side of Shenley Park in Oakland. I live just on the other side of Shenley Park. I drive past uh, where my grandmother and uh, my mom was raised, where I was raised every day on Parkview Avenue. Um, and so being here is, uh, I benefit a lot from growing up in Pittsburgh, you know, with the community. Uh, there were times that my family was in crisis and the community was there to support us. Um, and so this is my opportunity to give back and, uh, you know, participate in, you know, making sure that 
everybody in Pittsburgh has the opportunity uh, for prosperity. Do you really feel like your connection to Pittsburgh, your emotional and physical connections here really help inspire you and engage every you day. every day? Absolutely. I think when, uh, so my role in the mayor's office is primarily on the development side. I'm also the chairman of the URA, the Redevelopment Authority. And when you look at all the accolades we're getting as a city, you know, we're most livable and we're uh, international uh, newspapers are following us what's happening here there's a lot of great energy and development that's happening in Pittsburgh but there really are two Pittsburghs there's neighborhoods in the city uh, that haven't seen any development in multiple generations uh, that have child poverty rates amongst the highest of the country school dropout rates uh, that are over 50 percent predominantly in african-american neighborhoods uh, that's something that we and the mayor uh, his vision is to make sure that we're focusing our investment not just on downtown and the East End, but making sure that we bring those investments to neighborhoods that haven't seen it. And so that really informs everything we do uh, from within the city. And, and to grow up uh, and, and understand the struggle, um, it informs now that we're here, you know, <clears throat> managing the public's investment in projects to make sure that when we're making investments that it's really building wealth uh, for people that haven't seen it. Are there times we hear the mayor discuss a lot, we want to put Pittsburgh on the global map, and we actually, I mean, it's true, it's happening, we're seeing it happening right before our eyes right now. Are there times that you ever just sit back and think, how, like, holy buckets, how yeah. did this possibly happen to us? Yeah. So, you know, you don't want to get caught up in all the big, flashy or fluffy things and, and lose the things that you still, you know, you want to bring to the forefront, but, I, I mean... It's an exciting time to be here, and particularly from a development standpoint, there's a lot of potential here in Pittsburgh. It's a great question, and it also informs the mayor's vision of building the next Pittsburgh. Uh, we're not building a new Pittsburgh because, you know, we stand on the shoulders of generations of people who came before us. And uh, when I was a kid uh, in Oakland, uh, the LTV works was just over the hill, you know, waiting for the bus every day and the, the pollution coming up the hill. Um, but that there were people working, uh, and, and we lost that economy. And I remember in the early 80s when I was a young kid, uh, a lot of people were unemployed, and a lot of people left Pittsburgh. And so we now have the ability uh, with this new economy that we have, predominantly in our, our, our educational complexes that we have here, our, our great hospital systems, uh, to, to make sure that you know, people have the ability to have jobs. And so um, you know, we can't forget where we came from, and I think um, when we're getting this international attention, part of it is how we've remade ourselves as a city. Um, and again, our primary goal is to making sure that that prosperity is extended, you know, to all people, not just, a, you know, just the wealthy. Right. You have, have quite a task. So we have a new leader who has big visions, who's very familiar, who's been in this building for just about 20 years. He's got a lot of ideas, and it's your job to take those ideas translate them into you know actions create an action plan how is that for you it's very difficult uh <laughs> if you know bill like i do the mayor like i do uh he's very creative uh he's very energetic uh he likes to, to take big ideas and he wants us to push very hard uh, i'll often be the most le the least creative person you ever meet uh you know my job is more to identify you know where point b is how do we get there who needs to be on the team how do we implement the project um, and what what's it going to cost so uh, we're kind of complement each other you know he's very as again you know very creative into thinking of ways that we can make the city better my job is to manage the staff to make sure that we're implementing on that plan and and you can't you need to have both uh, and and so it, that's a common role for a chief of staff to be the sort of guy or lady behind the scenes who is making things happen consistent with the vision of the mayor. And uh, it's also easy to happen when you have somebody who you believe in. And I think all of us who've come to work here, people who voted for the mayor, whether you did or you didn't, uh, you know, he's someone who wakes up every day who wants to make the city better. And if I didn't feel like he was that kind of person, I wouldn't have left in my law career you know, with three young kids to, to, to join the city uh, to try to be a part of that. Speaking of people you believe in and people that inspire you, you have this lovely portrait yeah. up above <laughs> your desk watching over your short shoulder every day. Yeah, Tell us a little bit about this Roosevelt. Well, that's uh, Teddy Roosevelt. It's a, a replica of the 1906 uh, John Singer Sergeant portrait that hangs in the White House. Uh, that I had painted uh, when we moved back to Pittsburgh. It was my kind of coming home gift to myself. And, you know, President Roosevelt is someone who I've long, uh, he's a political champion of mine. 
um, not only because at, at a time when America was really finding itself as a global power, uh, he provided bold leadership. And it's a reminder every day that we're not here to just maintain the status quo. We're here to be bold. We're here to really change the city for the better. Uh, and uh, if you look at a lot of the good government reforms that we're still abiding by today, whether it be campaign, campaign finance reform, uh, a lot of the issues in breaking up the big business trusts that, that were happening at the turn of the 20th century, uh, this guy did all of that, and we're still benefiting from that. Uh, when I was in college as well, uh, my uh, student job was at Widener Library at Harvard where they had the uh, Roosevelt collection and so I had the Friday night shift uh, where nobody was there. So you totally geeked out. I totally geeked out <laughs> and so I had a key to the to his archives and I used to go in there and, and it had his original manuscripts. So I've, I've read a lot of what he's um, he's had today so it's a model of bold leadership uh, really uh, and also a, a, a sense of populism that when you have the power of government um, it's, a, it's an awesome power and you can either use it to the benefit uh, of, the, of the haves or you can try to help the have-nots and, and that's something that he championed that I try to remind myself every day when I come in here. Okay, so transitioning now we're going to talk to something about something a little bit lighter. Music. The more I get to know you, the more I understand you have quite an eclectic taste in music. What, in, you have lots of different things that inspire you. So you're surrounded by people, you have motivating figures, and you also have music. Yeah. Well, my, uh, I'm a school of, uh, I'm, I'm a big fan of uh, old school hip hop. Uh, <laughs> it's something that I know it's a joke, I wear a tie every day. But uh, kind of growing up uh, was influenced where I grew up in the city. Um, so you know the old, the old school Dr. Dre is some you know I'll, <laughs> early in the morning I'll often you know load it up on the, and yeah. I have a great speaker system here uh, that uh, so that that charges me up in the morning uh, with a little bit of you know Rage Against the Machine as well I'm a bit of an anarchist in my right. mu musical style so really both ends of the spectrum I do I do it all so um, in fact we've had a couple karaoke episodes where I've been known to get up there and, and I've seen one okay it's impressive <laughs> it's impressive if you're ever lucky enough to see Kevin Ackland take the mic at karaoke yeah. you will not be disappointed yeah all right so I asked the mayor this I'm gonna ask you this if you had an anthem right now so you know things are changing and evolving but for the current theme for this first five months or even building up from the campaign mm -hmm. into being in office what would you say your anthem is was. I think it's, um, well, the chief of staff job, you're kind of the enforcer. Mm -hmm. If you think, uh, I met the mayor playing ice hockey 10 years ago. Uh, when I played hockey in high school, I led the league in penalty minutes, and so I was more of an enforcer. Uh, so you're kind of seen as the bad guy. Right. Uh, so I'd say Neil Young, no one knows what it's like to be the bad man, you know. Uh, oh. But uh, candidly, it's, you know, you're <laughs> the guy that, that has to, you know, if there's something, if there's a problem, you know, he'll put it on me to go fix it. Um, it reminds me, though, of a story I came into the office one day early and I was on the elevator with an employee and uh, he said, you know, you're Kevin Acklin. I said, I am. He said, well, you know, I just got to let you know when I read about you in the paper, I thought you were kind of a jerk, but I've seen you in operation. You're actually a really good guy. So um, in, in any event, it is, it's a tough job where, you know, you have to sometimes be the bad guy, but, uh, you know, I always try to do it. I'm here to serve the mayor, but I'm also here to serve the city. And, uh, you know, there's a lot of great people that work in this building and, and for this government. And my style is to inspire them to, to come here every day and, and work on behalf of the residents. And, and rage even against though I sometimes have to rage <laughs> against the machine, well said. So, so sometimes I'm the bad guy, but uh, and I'm always doing it for the right reasons. Right. Your heart and mind in the right place. Absolutely. Excellent. Well, I think this was a perfect way to kick off our Meet the Chief series. We really thank you for your time. Thank you. And look forward to seeing what will come out. Maybe we'll come back and revisit some of the things that we talked about and, uh, I don't know, find your new anthem yeah. so, sometime from now. We'll see well, you which, know where to find me. So. we we'll see which direction that you go. Thank you so much for your time. And be sure to stay tuned to City Channel Pittsburgh for continued coverage of Meet the Chiefs.